Welcome to the Free Pilot Training Channel. This is Private Pilot Ground Lesson 12. In this episode, we're going to be explaining V-Speeds and the Airspeed Indicator. You don't want to miss out on any part of this lesson since you might see questions relating to this on your check ride or on your written exam. Just a couple quick notes before we get started with this lesson. First is that the letter V in these V-Speeds stands for velocity. It's not just some made up letter to confuse you. Second is that when we discuss V-Speeds, we're specifically talking about indicated airspeed. This is the airspeed that your airspeed indicator shows that you're going. Just be aware there are other types of airspeed. Let's take a really quick look at those. We'll discuss exactly how the airspeed indicator works in a future lesson. But just know that the indicated airspeed you're seeing may not be the actual airspeed that you're traveling. At different airspeeds and flap configurations, there can be some installation and instrument error. Manufacturers account for this by putting a chart in the POH. This adjusted airspeed is called calibrated airspeed. True airspeed is calibrated airspeed that's adjusted for altitude and temperature. At colder temperatures and higher altitudes, there's less pressure. This affects our airspeed indicator because it uses pressure to tell us how fast we're going. The most accurate way to get your true airspeed is to use a flight computer, but a quick way is to add 2% to your calibrated airspeed for every 1,000 feet of altitude. The next one is ground speed. This is simply how fast your airplane is flying over the ground. For example, if you have a headwind, you're traveling over the ground slower than your airspeed indicator tells you that you are. All right, enough of that. Let's go back to talking about V-speeds. These are simply indicated airspeeds you need to know to operate your airplane safely. First, let's look at two airspeeds we might want to climb at. These are VX and VY. Now we always want to climb away from the ground with max power. But if we pitch for VX, this gives us the best angle of climb. That means we get the most altitude in the shortest amount of distance. This is the airspeed we want to pitch for anytime we're trying to climb over an obstacle. I remember this by thinking, VX, I'm dead if I hit that tree. Next is VY. This is the best rate of climb. VY gives you the most altitude in the shortest amount of time. Unless you need to clear an obstacle, we typically climb out at VY. I'm sorry, I don't have a memory aid for this one. If you do, post it in the comments below so you can help someone else out. Now let's discuss maneuvering speed. This is VA. We talked about maneuvering speed a little bit in our lesson on load factor. Maneuvering speed is the fastest airspeed you can fly without causing structural damage. If you make a sudden input to one of the control surfaces or you run into turbulence. At maneuvering speed and below, if you put too much of a load on the airplane, you will stall before structural damage can happen. Just remember, above VA or maneuvering speed, if you put too much of a load or G's on the airplane, you can cause structural damage or structural failure. And an airplane without wings can be kind of tricky to fly. Let's take a look at our V speeds on the airspeed indicator. You'll find that most of your speed limitations are actually color coded. First, I want to point out something that's not a V speed. Zero airspeed marker. This may seem kind of obvious, but it should read zero when we're not moving. I usually check this during the run-up. Then on the takeoff roll, I check it again to make sure it's moving away from zero. That's how we check to make sure it works properly. Now let's take a look at the wide arc. The wide arc is our flap operating speed. At the bottom of the wide arc, we have power off stall speed. This is the stall speed in the landing configuration, meaning that the gear and flaps are extended. This V speed is VS0. You can remember this by stall with stuff out. At the upper limit of the wide arc, we have the maximum speed with the flaps extended. On this particular airplane, that airspeed is 105 knots. This V speed is VFE for flaps extended. If you fly above this airspeed with the flaps extended, you could damage the flaps. Now let's take a look at the green arc, which is our normal operating range. On the bottom or the lower limit of the green arc, we have stall speed with the gear and flaps retracted. This V speed is VS1. You can remember this by stall with stuff in. On the upper limit of the green arc, we have VNO. This is our maximum structural cruise speed. 
This is the fastest we want to fly in smooth air. But this one, remember, normally operate at this speed. Now let's take a look at the yellow arc, also known as the caution ring. Only fly in this range in smooth air, then proceed with caution. The lower limit of the yellow arc is also VNO. Remember, this is our normal operating speed. And more importantly, remember that we only fly in the yellow arc in smooth air. On the upper limit of the yellow arc, we have this little red line. This line indicates VNE, which means never exceed. Operating above VNE, even in smooth air, can result in structural damage or even structural failure of your airplane. Look at a couple more that have to do with retractable landing gear. Since, as a private pilot, you could get an endorsement to fly an airplane with retractable gear. First is VLO. This is the maximum speed for actually extending or retracting the gear. Remember this one by remembering landing gear lowered. Next is VLE. This is the maximum speed you can fly around after you have lowered the gear. Remember, landing gear extended. By the way, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell notification so you don't miss out on the next lesson. We'll see you next time.